Ahoy, everybody! It's Sasha here, and I'm playing with my new toy some more! It's actually, we're, we're using a new view today, which is, like, way too cool, and it's Funky Hat Friday, and we've got awesome funky hats. So we're going to talk to you today about some really awesome funky stuff, because why wouldn't we? Um, now, before I get going with the great stuff that we've got um, and I introduce our wonderful guest, I'm going to give our guest a second to be able to share it so that more people can see. And I do encourage anybody out there right now, if you're out there, if you're watching us, share us. We're wonderful people. We look fantastic. Look at that. I'll be cute. Just share us. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll be telling you a lot of really great stuff about niching and marketing today. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, I've decided I really like Fridays when I'm wearing fur. All right. So I am just sharing this here. There we go. Awesome. So now we are all good. And hopefully we get a few people uh, popping in. And guys, if you have questions, please tell us we are more than happy to stop what we are doing to answer a couple of your questions because a new toy come on all right so today my guest is tamara mcduff and she runs now digital marketing it's it's like she's got like the coolest niche on the planet i've been so excited to share her with you uh, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give her a chance um to introduce herself uh, that way you know you can get to know a little bit more about tamara so Tamara, tell us about Now Digital Marketing. About Now Digital Marketing. Okay. Well, um, Now Digital Marketing, we uh, do everything all digital. But can I talk about my niche right now? If you want, I'm a little bit more into it. But, yeah, tell them your awesome niche. Okay. What I specialize in, I work in all industries, but what I specialize in is funeral home social media and funeral home digital marketing. So we'll tell you more about how I got into that. But I've been doing digital marketing. I'm self-taught for about 10 years now. And I've uh, been in the funeral industry for like 40 years. So it's kind of awesome. And I just love playing around with social media and screaming and tearing my hair out and getting to wear monkey hats. I mean, what other profession can I do that? I can't do that in a 95. So, um, yeah, so it's been, it's been fun. It's been great working with you, getting out of my own way and all the fun we have talking about different stuff. So I can't wait. I can't wait, but we do everything digital. So we do ads, we do social media strategy. We're big on strategy. Um, but we do management, we do reporting, consulting. I do, I do it all. So yeah, you, you digital. Do. I can do it. <laughs> and you've been doing some great stuff for me. You're you're looking into my analytics to help me tweak and refine, yeah. which is like my favorite thing on the planet. So I'm so happy that you could join us. So guys, I, in case you in case you missed that, uh, she works the funeral home niche. She does social media marketing for funeral. How cool is that? And that that's my 10 cents here um, because I think that's freaking amazing. So that's actually going to help us move on into the next topic here, which is her unique niche. So as we mentioned, what Tamara does is she markets for funeral homes. And she's got a really, really cool set of experience because she used to work with them. So she's going to be able to tell us a little bit more about what makes her her, 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 her niche unique. You can tell it's Funky Hat Friday because it's also Sassy Left Her Tongue Elsewhere Friday. Uh, but she's going to tell us about what makes her niche so unique, uh, which is going to lead us into our next topic, which is why niching is so important. So please, Tamara, tell me, why do you work with those funeral homes and, and what's different about working with them as opposed to some of the stuff that you used to do, like working with bands? Oh, yeah, working with bands. The bands are fun. The bands are fun. Um, the funeral homes, it's interesting because you have to balance, like, the dignity and the honor of the decedent and the honor and the wishes of the family while you're still trying to help the funeral home make some money, right? So it kind of actually what I've adopted all along, all these years that I've worked with them, is the same thing that you just wrote about in your blog post of unmarketing. And I help them kind of tell their story and let the and tell the loved one's story because they have a ton of content that they're not using. And what really drives me crazy and made me get back into it is the fact that they're all doing the same thing. And 
well, that's true. You don't have to do the same thing to do the same thing. You know, they're all doing obituaries. They're all doing testimonials. They're all doing, you know, whatever. And it's just, it makes me crazy. So I have a unique way of coming into it because my grandfather started our funeral home uh, way back in 1956 here in Rochester. He started in New York City. He did some work for Engelmeyer Nagel, Nagel, I think it is, Engelmeyer Nagel. I should probably learn to pronounce it since I want to go visit them when I'm in New York. <laughs> but um, he used to work down there, and he moved to Rochester with his wife and started a family and started uh, our funeral home. Then my dad and my mom bought it, and I worked in it for a little while. Then I left it to go manage some rock and roll bands, which we might talk about because that's a whole different, that's another niche. And um, then I came back and I went to school to become a licensed funeral director. I didn't finish, but I passed my boards. I did all of those things. So I've done the internship or whatever we call residency. So I, I, I can see that from both the family's perspective, because I'm human, so I've lost people. I've lost my grandparents. I've lost a sister. I've lost... But I can also see it from a funeral director's view and, you know, and what it takes to serve those families. And I kind of mix that all in and create some really cool social media campaigns that nobody else has really seen that seem to really work. So I get them away from all the vanity uh, likes, you know, because you've heard about it in your industry, right? I'm sure your clients come to you and go, no, get me more likes. No, get me more shares. And you're like, I want more phone calls, <laughs> you know. I want more yeah, conversion. Likes and shares are great, but they don't pay the bills. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I try to train them to kind of think counterintuitively about their digital marketing. And that's what makes me different. Because I don't talk about the algorithm because I don't chase it. I don't understand it. I don't want to understand it. But I still know what works. And I learn about their community because every community is different. Um, every funeral home is different. Even though we all did the exact same thing, they're all, they all approach it different. My dad, he was a lot into education and educating about the value of funeral services and veterans because he was a veteran. So they held a really special place in his heart. Other people are big on um, supporting the community and thinking big and building and globally and that kind of stuff. So we focus on those things. So I focus on a lot of different things that nobody else is talking about. Well, I mean, you, you're really focusing on the things that we're already seeing social media start to move back to, which is more of that on marketing, right? That, yeah. that connection without the overt sales tactics. And, and I think it's great because it needs to come back into all industries. So what you're doing is absolutely fantastic. Now, I love this idea of counterintuitive marketing. Um, it, you're, you're meaning almost that that disruptive type, the, the mm -hmm. type that's a little bit against the grain, right? Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's bringing the humanity back into the social media. You know, it's really making it more social and having more conversations. And to borrow a phrase from my friend, because she's awesome and she comes up with all this stuff, um, she always says, you know, a simple hello can lead to a million things. And online, that is absolutely true. But if you think about it, marketing has not changed in 2,000 years. What's the one thing that drives every single sale that everybody's ever done in their whole entire life? It's true. <laughs> relationship. Yeah. You have to build a relationship. And there's always all kinds of trust. And it's really interesting that um, I noticed it in funeral homes because I'm like right in it, but I'm sure there's all kinds of businesses out there that if you talk to people about why did they choose to work with a certain firm, Advertising doesn't usually say, oh, yeah, I saw your ad and I loved it, and so now here I am. So advertising doesn't do it, and yet they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm like, if I could get my hands on that budget for digital, do you have any idea what I could do for you? You know, it could be a fraction of that, and we could still drive more targeted stuff. I could show you more things. And um, so that's, yeah, that's where we are is a driving conversation. I like to say that Facebook and social media has come up with us. They've caught up with you and me because you and I think along the same lines, you know, and, uh, and so, yeah, it's come back around to where it needs to be, where it's more human. 
Well, and exactly. It's it's bringing the humanity back to social media. And, and that's really what you stand for and something that I try to teach as well, because it's that loss of humanity, that overtake of big sales ad, flashy, flashy buttons that's really made a lot of us burn out on it, right? So I, I, I absolutely love that you brought that up. And I know that that's what you stand for, which is half the reason that we're here. Right. Now, I want to break down and, and talk a little bit more about niching as well, because mm -hmm. everybody needs to know it's all about the people. And I really hope they do. Guys, if you do not know that it's all about the people, it's all about your audience, your people, not you. Anyway, right. so what I want to talk about is that importance of niching, because you have actually worked in two very unique niches now, the funeral home industry and music. And those are uh, both completely like bipolar. I'm still not entirely sure how the two connect. All I can think is enough of them die. Uh, but uh, because of that, you're working in two very, very different markets. And so that's where that niching kind of becomes important. Now, just before I move on, we, we've got a question from our audience here. Uh, how do you build trust in a marketing campaign when you're a new business owner? Uh, and I mean, this will happen in any industry. So if they're not getting the traffic, if they're not getting the visibility, if they don't have the following, what can they do to build that? So even just one tip. <laughs> um, network, be authentic, go out and, and meet people, go offline and tell people what you do. Your marketing actually starts before your business gets formed. So before you set up that DBA, before you set up the LLC, you're marketing that idea and be consistent. So be consistent in your online marketing. If you have a blog, be consistent. If you have Facebook, be consistent, LinkedIn, whatever it is, whatever platform you're on, just be consistent and be authentic and show your side of what you would do if you were in somebody else's shoes kind of thing. If you're like a consultant, for example, if you were a consultant to a CEO, what would you do? If you were in the shoes of a band, how would you promote this song? Those those kinds of things. And just be really authentic, have conversations, but most of all, be consistent. That's the biggest thing that you can do to build trust online or offline. And, I, you know, that's a great point. And I love that you mentioned that because, guys, consistency really, really is the key. I say it all the time. If you're going to have it, use it and use it frequently because it's an image thing too. It's not even just about engaging your audience, which you need to do. It's not even just about building that instant recognition, which doesn't happen instantly. It's also about the fact that if somebody comes to your website or they come to check out your product or they come to check out your funeral home and uh, there's crickets left, right and center, they're gonna doubt your capabilities. So either don't have it or do something with it, but that halfway mark isn't gonna help much. So I, I really, really love that. And, and thank you to Josh, who says he really loves our Funky Hat Friday. Oh, thank you. There have to be more of these, just saying. <laughs> uh, so a great question from the audience. So now what we're gonna do is, like I said, I really wanna talk about that importance of niching and how you have learned over your time to really harness that. Okay. Um First of all, I failed every step of the way because I go kicking and screaming in everything that I do. So when I got, first got into digital marketing, I was like every other business owner. I did not want to lose any business, so I wanted to serve all industries, right? Because once you know social media or you know digital marketing, AdWords, it's just a matter of knowing their competitors. It's a matter of logistics. However, it kept coming back to me, and I kept seeing funeral home ads that were just no, and they're the way they're doing them, they're chasing all the wrong people, and I'm like, there's got to be something different, so I went back to my strength. I know that industry like the back of my hand, and I know I can do really good things. So people like you have talked me into, and plus our tribe, it's very important to have a tribe, find a tribe online or offline, and everybody was like, dude, why? you're like a unicorn, why are you not in the payroll business? And so I went back into that, I trusted them, and now I'm niching it out, and we're gonna be consistent, and we're going to get back into doing stuff, it's awesome. Um, and plus it helps me to focus, because what you focus on grows. If I focus on every single industry out there, then I do none of them well, right? I have a working knowledge of all of them. I could kind of help them all, but I'm going to be very successful with the funeral homes because that's what I'm focusing on. And when you niche down or niche down, 
that's exactly what you're doing. You're picking on what you want to grow and what you focus on grows. It doesn't, you can keep everything else in your back pocket. When I mentor business owners, that's what I tell them. Oh, but I want to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I, and J. Awesome. Keep it on your back pocket, but do A. And then when people come in and they ask, you're like, you know what? I actually can help you with that. And then just pull it out for special people, you know. Absolutely. And I mean, that's really the idea behind niching down uh, is that you're niching down to your zone of genius to where you're really going to shine the best. And that gives you the best possible chance to connect with your audience, to be uh, genuine and validated. I mean, I'll, I'll call this out of my own life. So originally when I started my business, it was meant to be event planning. Now, not to say I'm not great at event planning. But anybody who knows me knows I have social anxiety, so maybe not my zone of genius. And for me, part of niching down was understanding that I was better behind a screen or behind a door, or, um, behind anything but another human being. So that's how I shifted and I'm niching down so I can really serve the people that I want to serve in the way that I serve best. And that's where I find my zone of genius. So. I think Absolutely. Tamara's doing the same thing because her insight on funeral home marketing is, it's so needed. I mean, really, if you had to today, heaven forbid something happened to someone, if you had to go and pick a funeral home right now, would you even know the name of one? I do. You do, you do. But I'm betting a lot of people out in our audience don't. I don't. No, and you know, a lot of the, and it's interesting where they're spending all their money and they're spending money on ads, which is fine because you need paid and organic. I got it. I understand, Crystal. But really where people find their funeral homes, and that's the other thing about your niche and about the marketing in general and the unmarketing we've been talking about, is you have to understand your community and how they find you. And in the funeral industry, they go by referral. They'll get a referral from a hospice or a hospital or a doctor or a friend, or maybe they saw the funeral director in church. They know the funeral director's daughter. I got a lot of those. They know the funeral director from giving a presentation at the Rotary, you know, any, any number of things. None of those things are, hey, I saw your Facebook ad and I want to talk to you. None of them are like that. While they will drive leads and, and they have been effective, that's, and that's fine. Like I said, you need a little bit of that, but the heavier stuff needs to be on the conversation and the unmarking of your expertise. So, yeah, Absolutely. it's knowing your market. It's knowing your, it's knowing your community. It's knowing who the people are that connect with you. We had people that come to our funeral home because they liked the way our garden was, the way the, way the landscaping was. So like, we drove by every day and mom wanted to come here. And we live in Gates. I'm like, that's a half an hour away from us. <laughs> but we loved your landscaping. Okay. And you, but you know what? That's that's further support for consistency, right? Because, I mean, they must have driven by there how many times and seen that landscaping? <laughs> how many times did they have to do it before they actually stopped and said something? And it, it actually speaks to human nature because it's the same thing with social media, advertising, and marketing. They're going to see it. And they're going to see it and they're going to see it and they're going to see it and then they might reach out. So what? if you're not giving them that message enough over a period of time, if you're not consistent in that message, and most importantly, if that message doesn't help them in any way, mm -hmm. why are you doing it? Right? And and it, really it, it goes way back to what you just said. It's not about you. And I tell all my clients that I have a restaurant, the bands I work with, all of them, it's not about you. It's about your user, and you always have to look at what's in it for them. So be genuine in your answers and in your wanting to serve them and help them, because that's really what you're there for. Well, mm -hmm. exactly. And, I mean, that also feeds into niching, because in order to know your community, know what they want, know where they're hanging out, knowing what they're doing, you need to niche down. Um, I'll give you an example. There are three of us that work in, in this office that, uh, you know, during the day. And the three of us, <laughs> we are completely different people. Um, I mean, look at me. My husband is this adorable six foot something ginger um, that likes completely different things than I do for the most part. Uh, and then we've got another worker here and he likes completely different things. So we all have completely different things that we like. So what message might appeal to me isn't going to appeal to the other two people in this room. The broader your market, 
the harder it is to sing the note that's going to resonate with them. And I think that's really what, what we're driving at is right. that by niching down, you can get that intimacy with the people that are really going to look for you. You can oh. connect with your audience and you can make it so that those are the people that are gaining speed with you, that they're your tribe, they're building because they understand what you're putting out and you understand them. And that's the piece that a lot of marketers are missing right now. Yes. They just don't understand their audience. They don't know who they are. They don't know what they're doing or where they're at or why. And that lack of understanding comes out in every message that they say. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're, they're, they're left going, Hey, how come nobody ever reaches out? That's your, that's exactly it because they get hung up on, I create personas. You saw my John Bon Jovi persona in the back. My friend gave me, me a mask for my birthday. That's how that became a persona. And so now I have it hanging up and we, John and I talk every day and um, they, but they, they focus on the demographics of that persona. They don't focus on what attracted them to me. Why did they choose me before? Why, what do I have to offer? What are their pain points? How can I help serve them? How can I solve them? A lot of marketers aren't answering those questions and the ones who are, are the ones that are knocking it out of the park. Exactly. The ones who are, are the ones who are, you know, really succeeding there. Uh, now we have another question. So I'd love if you could throw in on this one. Um, I obviously, <laughs> I obviously have my two cents too, but how important is organic growth to the longevity of your business? Um, and organic is something that we're now before I continue organic meaning people that you didn't have to reach via uh, dollars or doodads organic and marketing uh, whereas non-organic is things that you pay for or you invest in or that you're you're giving something away to obtain so uh, it's really people finding you naturally versus pay for play mm -hmm. right so right. how important would you say that organic growth is and how do you manage organic growth? Hmm. Let's see. Um, organic growth is very important. It, it has to be the backbone of what you do. You do have to pay to play to a certain extent in order to reach people. But I get asked all the time, how often do I boost a post? Um, when are you having a sale? When are you having an event? When are you, when you're going live, you might want to boost that post those kinds of things. But otherwise, it should all be organic. And you, again, talk, use hashtags. Hashtags on Facebook work for me. I know everybody, all the gurus out there are saying, oh, don't do them. But I get more reach. And when I use them, my organic reach is better than any paid reach my clients decide to use. So I always go for the organic, but I understand there has to be a mix. You know, but I think it's very important because it's the only thing that's going to sustain you. Because as soon as your ad budget runs out, Facebook's going to lose interest. When your ad budget runs out, the TV station loses interest, right? But if you've organically made those relationships, now the people at the TV station are still going to recommend you when they come across people in other conversations. So your organic growth has to be the backbone and it, it, your business has to be built on that. Absolutely. And I agree. I 100% I agree. At this point, we really need organic growth to be the backbone of our, our business. Because without the organic growth, when it, it, I, love, I love it, when the money runs dry, Facebook might not love you anymore. <laughs> What's that song? There's a song that says when there's no dinero, the girls don't care or something. It's a country song. <laughs> Well, I mean, and it's, I mean, it's something that a lot of people are feeling right now because Facebook has this more pay for play where businesses are concerned. But you know what? People like myself and like Tamara, uh, Tamara blah, 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 blah. we aren't stressing about this change because our tactics haven't changed. We're still focused on the people that we serve and the people that we love. I'm here on a live video with fuzzy ears on sharing information that other people would charge you tons of money for because I understand my audience. I want to give back to my audience. I want to connect with you guys. It's not about showing you the shiny new thing. I mean, well, okay, maybe a little bit because I like shiny toys, but it's not well, about it's getting your money, <laughs> right? It's not about getting your money. It's about getting, getting you and your involvement and for you to care in what I do because when you care, it empowers me to care more mm -hmm. and then the money will come. So neither Tamara or I are actually very uh, dollar focused.
Um, which is funny because in our, our mastermind group, we're, we're part of this amazing mastermind group. I have to do it. Shankminds.com. Oh, you didn't do it. I was going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. One of us was going to do it. So we're in this really, really awesome mastermind group, right? And the, I, I just lost my train of thought, didn't I? Yeah, very much. That did. Yeah, we're that's kind of it. But, you know, Shank Minds is awesome. And it is, it truly is my tribe. They understand me, they get me, and not many people do because it's kind of a scary thing sometimes. But they, um, your tribe gets you and they support you. And they, and when you fail and you go in and say, I'm having a shit day, they're right there to say, oh, it'll be better tomorrow. Or they'll say, suck it up, buttercup. And, and they, they push you forward. And so I think it's important for every entrepreneur to find that tribe, whether it's, Okay, we'll share Shank Minds with you if we really have to because I love Peter and I want to see it grow, but honestly, it's my secret sauce and I don't want any more people, right? <laughs> I, <say that. laughs> I get that. <laughs> I want them up to myself, but no, seriously, if you join, we would love to have you and it's a very welcoming group, but be prepared to have no candy coated nothing in that group. How often do we candy coat anything in that group, Sasha? Oh my gosh, like uh, like never. But you know never. what? We all understand. Like the entire, this is the point. I knew it was there. The entire group, for the most part, when we have somebody in our group uh, from successperformancesolutions.com. Absolutely fantastic work that this guy does. But we all did these surveys for him, partially to help and partially because we're all curious. Right. As it turns out, most of the people that are successful, that are motivated, uh, uh, most of the people actually at all in our mastermind group are really eager to help. We've all turned more to assistance and cooperation and altruism as opposed to money grabbing and advertising techniques and vicious sales. I mean, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. And that's really what we're trying to express. And that's why building your tribe is so important because when you build the tribe, everything else will come. If you focus on the people and and, and giving to them what you're promising to give them and really focus on bringing them up, they're going to want to bring everybody else up with them and you're right. going to be the person that they remember. Yep, and I have I have an offline networking group here that I meet with every Tuesday and I've been to a lot of networking groups, you know, where there's that one seat, right? You can only have one seat for social media, one seat for marketing, and one seat for insurance. I, there's, I dropped them all except this one group because this one group is the closest thing to offline shank minds as I could find where I'm very comfortable. I can tell them almost anything. If I, I had a personal uh, emergency kind of thing happen in December and everybody was right there. Um, it, when I had my new website, people went and checked it out and gave me real feedback. And they weren't giving me, oh, it looks great, you know, because they like me. They were like, well, I like this. I don't like this. You need to change this, you know, whatever. And but they're all small things, but they were they were honest. And that's what you need. You don't want to surround yourself with a lot of yes people. And that's the other thing. When you're growing your business, find the people who are going to tell you the truth, who are not gonna just say yes because they like you and you're awesome. Um, my mentor, one of my mentors, I have many mentors, and one of them um, is the one of the first one hundred people to be certified in AdWords. Oh wow. I know him personally. So uh, he and I were talking. He goes, you've got to focus on social media and not analytics, not anything else. And I'm like, I can do analytics. He goes, I didn't say you couldn't. Your strength is in social media. And that's where you keep landing. And that's where you need to focus and leave the analytics to us. And then maybe we could collaborate a little better. But honestly, beyond that, your strength is in social media. It's not in analytics. So he wasn't taking away anything from my skill set. Like you with event planning, you're great at event planning, I'm sure, but you're better. Your zone of genius is over here with social media, websites, consulting, coaching. That's where your true zone of genius is, but it takes nothing away from your other skills. Exactly. And, uh, it, and it's really important to emphasize that working in your zone of genius gives you a leg up. It's not going to take away from the other things that you do. It's no. going to help you build that loyal base of followers faster because you're working in the area that you really shine. You right. got to shine. If you're not <laughs> shining, what's the point? Right? Um, even the ones of us who would prefer to hide, you still need to shine once in a while, right? Uh, yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> 
but it's it's working in that zone of genius that really allows us to to grow and expand. Now, you mentioned something that before we before we check out today, I really want to uh, bring up, and that's collaboration. In this new age of unmarketing and the kinds of styles that we're doing, collaboration is huge. 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 Right? I mean, uh, Tara and I are collaborating. I'm collaborating with other coaches, with other, and it's not just my clients. It's people that I'm actually working with to create things and do more and move both of us forward. Right. right. Collaboration is your key to getting more tribe members because those people are going to invest in you as much as you're investing in them. Absolutely. Right? So, as business owners, it's really easy for us to want to just, oh, I could do that, and I could do that, and I'll do that, and I'll take that, and it's all in mine, 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 mine. Um, let it go, guys. Find somebody else in your in their zone of genius. Find someone else in the zone that you need and say, hey, let's strike a deal. Let's work this out together. Let's give each other business, and let's both prosper. But it's really, really important that when you consider niching, that's exactly what you're doing. You're narrowing it down to your zone of genius so that you can be the best possible person that you can. If it's not your zone of genius, outsource it, get a collaboration, call me, whatever it happens to be, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, call me. <laughs> I, no, absolutely. I do business consulting um, because I do business mentoring through SCORE, so I support local businesses like that. Um, I have people apply for a consultation on my website simply because... It's not about your budget. While I do have my ideal client has a budget and it is posted on there, anyone can apply because I'm looking more for the mindset and um, than I am for the budget. Because like you said, the money will come, right? And if the money is there, there are certain points that I'm going to point you to another resource because I'm just not going to touch certain price points. But um, because I can't, they're just, I, I can't do it. Um, but I'm going to give you, I'm still going to support you, whether you're in my ideal client range or not. I'm going to support you and I'm going to answer your questions. So it's about mindset. And I teach in all of my classes. The only way us micro businesses are going to survive is if we collaborate and not compete. We cannot, there's more than enough business. Because in what we do, you and I, when we do like social media stuff, there's stuff about social media I don't like to do. You and I have talked about it, right? <laughs> and I'm like, and when I get my funnel full, you know, to that point, you're the team I'm going to probably reach out to, right? Because but first we've got to pay our bills and we, we do whatever we understand that. But I will collaborate. I will be the first one to collaborate on anything because I don't, I'm not there to take anybody's clients. I don't want your clients. I, I want to do what I like to do. Yeah. I'm and a genius. There are enough clients to go around for everybody. What's more important is making sure the people that are trusting you are getting what they need. Absolutely. And as soon as they do that, they will make sure that other people get what they need because they are so happy. It is not about the money. It is not about the bottom line. It is about giving that service. Now, that's not to say that there aren't people out there that are overdoing it. There are, are times when you're going to have to say, well, no, I can't. You know, that's that's not it. But you always go the extra mile. Even if I can't, I can't help somebody. Even if they're outside of my price range or they just don't have the budget, I find a way to get them to that next point to try to give them a little bit more. And you know what? They'll remember that. Oh I mean, yeah. People come back. You know, I I talked to a few people at the very start of my business, and I had some of them come back like a year and a half later, just because I was so pleasant at the time. I'm like, you know what? This isn't the right fit for me right now. It's a little out of my expertise. But here, let me connect you with someone who is. They came back a year and a half later when they had need for my zone, mm -hmm. and here they are. So you never know. But if you don't, if you don't offer those collaboration opportunities, you're not going to get them back. Oh, absolutely no. I offered, you know, I offer collaboration opportunities in my competition all the time, whether it's here in Rochester or across the United States, wherever. Um, and everybody knows that if they have questions, especially about strategy, or even if they need me to babysit a page for a little bit or take care of posting for a week because they're swamped, anything, you know, I'm, I'm willing to help because that's part of it, quite honestly, in the funeral industry, that's my differentiator is that I'm a collaborator and I'm not going to compete with you. I will share your event on my page. I welcome you to do whatever, you know, a lot of people think I'm crazy. They're like, my God, why would you do that? And it's because I'm not afraid, because I know what I'm good at, and I know what they're good at, and I know that there's way more than enough funerals out there that need our expertise, that 
it's it's all going to be okay. So absolutely, collaboration is the key. Well, and there's, I mean, there's so much negative out there. There's, there's so much bringing us down all the time. Why aren't we lifting each other up? Again, more than enough work for everybody. Easy to be a decent human being, and being a decent right. human being is really all that anybody else wants. So right. if you're out there, join us in this movement. Let's make our our audience people first again. Let's go back to that. It worked beautifully, I swear. I and you know, and let's let let's shape the future that we want because really that's up to us. Um, we're the only ones who can. Exactly, we can be the light. Yes. Oh, I love that. So uh, I do want to thank you. I won't keep everybody too long. We have we've done a like thirty six hour chat session. That is pretty strong. So I, again, I really want to hours. That oh, did I say hours? Yes, you did. Yeah, I would yeah, like yeah. to talk to you for thirty six hours, but you know that would be a while. Wow, it's a good thing that I have a good sense of humor. No, 36 minutes. We've done a great job here. And again, I really want to thank you so much. Tamara McDuff joining us from Now Digital Marketing. It's nowdigitalmarketing.us. Us, not us. Yes, dot like US. It. Yep. Yeah, I just got that. There's, there's, I, I'm clearly tired today. But thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Everybody who commented. If you have more questions, either for myself or Tamara, Tamara, I, I'm done. Leave it in the comments below. And uh, we look forward to catching you next week. Bye. Thank you very much.